Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Remote Lawyer. Today, we are going to be talking about reviewing SOWs, which are statement or scope of work. Now, typically, you would have heard of something called a master services agreement. Now, a master services agreement is a master document within which several SOWs or statement or scope of works are executed. Now, it's as important to draft or review a statement of work as it is to draft or review a master services document. Now, there are a few things you need to keep in mind while you are reviewing a SOW. First is the scope. Now, a um, uh, SOW should have a very detailed scope of the work that you're going to undertake. One master services agreement can have multiple SOWs executed within it. Focus on the technical and operational aspects of a SOW. So for example, if you are providing software services, now you should focus on minute details of these services and capture them in writing so that later on there is no scope for confusion. Also, there should be no scope for ambiguity while you are defining scope. Uh, a lot of times people also mention stuff like ingredients to be used or even a particular process or a mechanism to be used within the scope of work. So for example, if you are a contractor who's providing uh, uh, catering services, for example, now, there could also be things mentioned that you are not supposed to use these particular vegetables or these particular uh, spices, etc. So, till the level of that detailing also, a scope of work is defined. Now, it should be uh, defined very objectively. It should not be vague or ambiguous because at the end of the day, if there's a dispute, a SOW is looked upon as something which can help you resolve that dispute. Therefore, everything should be crystal clear and captured in writing. Now, timelines. So typically when you're providing a service, you need to have a particular timeline set up. Now, it could either be one single project or it could be a project divided into multiple milestones. So you should preferably have timelines associated with each particular milestone. Now, if there is a grace period that the, uh, the customer is giving to the vendor, then this grace period should also be mentioned in the, in the SOW. Now, there could be a timeline for support services. So for example, if you are providing software services and you have a support team who's providing support and maintenance to the customer. Now you should have timeline set for within uh, the time period when the support team will respond to the queries. So typically three working days, four working days, et cetera. Uh, also, every time you review a timeline, make sure that the, term, the, the language working days is mentioned there because a lot of times people would include Saturdays and Sundays also within the timeline and that can cause problems later on. Now, management of the project. So if you are providing services to a customer, there should typically be people who are responsible for supervising and monitoring this work. Who decides till when has the work progressed, whether it's satisfactory or not, et cetera. So ideally there should be spokes from each party, a representative from the customer side, a representative from the vendor side. Ideally they should meet regularly to monitor the progress of the work. There should also be an escalation matrix available in the SOW. So in case there are any issues or any complaints, there is names and numbers or contact details of people the other party can approach. Because a SOW could be different. So for example, if there's a MSA between two, a vendor and a customer. So the SPOCs or the representatives for each scope of work could be different. Therefore, it's important to mention their names and contact details in each SOW. Now payment. So uh, the MSA may have the payment clause as well, but the payment terms for each scope of work may be different, uh, depending upon the nature of the work, the complexity of the work, et cetera. Now the payment schedule should be clearly defined in the scope of work. 
whether it's payable in advance, whether it's payable in areas, whether any refunds are allowed. Invoicing process should also be step-by-step -step defined. Uh, within what time period should the vendor invoice the customer? Within what time period the payment needs to be made? Is there any delayed interest payment? All those things needs to be mentioned in the SOW. If uh, you are from the customer side, you need to check uh, firstly, whether the invoice the invoice has to be cleared within what is the stipulated time period, whether it's working days or not, whether there is a penalty imposed for delayed payment or not, etc. So those are the things you need to look out for. Now, changes in the scope of work. It could be that uh, the party started with a different understanding and now they want to amend the scope of work. Now, typically, the master services agreement would have a clause which would talk about amendment in the agreement. However, that amendment needs to be reflected in the statement of work or the scope of work as well. So first thing that the parties need to decide is whether the scope of work can change or not. If yes, then what is the process and how can it be changed? Also, who can change the scope of work, whether it's based on a mutual agreement or whether there is a unilateral change? Now, again, if either if you are representing either of the parties, you need to look out for a unilateral change because that is something which should not be acceptable. Also, the process of change in SOW and in the MSA should be synonymous with each other and they should not be different. Also, there could be certain provisions which are immutable or unchangeable. So you need to take a call there whether you would want such provisions built in your statement of work or not. Now, termination of statement of work. So first is upon completion of work. Once uh, your work has been completed, the statement of work can automatically terminate uh, once the payment has been cleared. Now, as a SOW is governed under a MSA, it should also run synonymous with MSA. So once the MSA terminates, the SOW also automatically terminates. Now, if the MSA has been breached, then the parties should be at liberty, at least the suffering party, to terminate the SOW. Now, again, breach of service level agreement, if a service level agreement has been breached, then also uh, parties provide for termination of SOW. The SOW can also terminate upon mutual agreement. So, for example, if the customer no longer requires the work, then maybe based upon mutual agreement, the SOW can be terminated. So when you are reviewing a SOW, make sure that there is a termination of SOW clause there. Also make sure that MSA and SOW are synonymous with each other and there is no conflict or inconsistency with them, uh, between the two of them. Also uh, make a provision that uh, the MSA would override the SOW or vice versa, depending upon the understanding of the parties, either in the MSA or in the SOW. Thank you. Hopefully uh, that was of use to you. If you have any queries regarding drafting or reviewing of SOWs, feel free to message me on LinkedIn. You can also drop a comment down here or reach out to us on uh, our website that is remotelawyer.in. Thank you. Stay safe.